हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू पेन एंड पेपर केमिस्ट्री ऑन यूट्यूब आई होप यू आर ऑल रेडी विद योर पेन एंड पेपर सो दैट वी कैन कंटिन्यू विद द टॉपिक ऑफ कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड्स वी वो ऑलरेडी कवर्ड प्रेपरेशन ऑफ कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड्स इन आर अर्लियर वीडियो एंड आई होप यू हैव द फ्लो चार्ट एज वेल इन प्लेस so let's get started with the properties of carboxylic acids today for the properties of carboxylic acids here's the flow chart and if you if you see the flow chart carefully the properties have been categorized into four values so first we shall be uh, first is the acidic character of carboxylic acids obviously as the name indicates second is the properties of the oh group third is we shall be talking about the properties of cooh group as a whole and of course there is one specific property which is limited to carboxylic acids with an alpha hydrogen atom now what are these properties and why do carboxylic acids show this behavior if you see carboxyl carboxyl is actually made up of two parts you remember doing carbonyl compounds right c double bond o as the functional group this is the carbonyl group which we did in the previous chapter when we spoke about aldehydes and ketones c double bond o hydroxyl is the oh group which you did in alcohols now what do we do is we combine the two carbo cell right combine the two and we have what we call as the carboxyl group and that is why these are called as carboxylic in the first place so this is our carboxyl group the second part of the name is acid why are they called acids we shall as the name indicates obviously they show properties of acids right now what are those properties and which hydrogen is released we shall talk about this in greater detail looking at the structure of the carboxyl group let's relate our learning from aldehydes and ketones now in the case of carbonyl group you see there are three bonds 1 2 and 3 So what is the angle at which they will be maximum distance apart from each other? Yes, of course, it will be one, two, and three. In other words, there is this trigonal planar shape, and they are wherein the carbon is sp two hybridized. So what do you think would be the bond angle? Look at the angle over here. How much would be the bond angle? Sum of angles around a point is three sixty. you are dividing this 360 degrees of space amongst three people and that comes to 120 degrees so the bond angle is 120 degrees now apply the same logic to the carboxyl group and see what bond angle yes again if you see 1 2 and 3 the third atom is oxygen over here so with the result again the shape will be trigonal planar around which carbon what will be the hybridization of the carbon because this carbon is forming a double bond with the oxygen because of the double bond it is showing sp2 hybridization we've already discussed hybridization in a lot of details in a lot of videos on the channel right which thankfully all of you have liked and appreciated thank you so much so this bond angle is again 120 degrees right this gives us the shape of the carboxyl group now when i gave you the flow chart this flow chart now what i'm going to do is just to break the monotony i'm going to do this flow chart in the reverse order and i am taking up the properties of a reduction you see over here carboxyl group can be easily reduced to alcoholic group or alkanes what are the conditions of those reactions important properties 
a reduction as I said. Now, if you recall, while doing the preparation of carboxylic acids, I told you that alcohols are oxidized to aldehydes. Aldehydes or alcohols can also be oxidized to carboxylic acids depending on the strength of the oxidizing agent that you use. Now, the carboxylic acids in turn can be reduced to alcohol. Actually, up going by the same logic, carboxylic acids should be easily reduced to aldehydes as well. But we have not been able to control the reaction. Uh, for your level of study, of course, we can say that carboxylic acids uh, are not easily reduced by aldehydes. They are directly converted into alcohols. It is a little difficult because you need to stop the reaction at this stage. The details of this is beyond the present curriculum. So, we shall limit ourselves to the conversion of carboxylic acids to alcohols on being reduced. So, when you reduce it, carboxylic acids will turn to alcohols. Now, what are the various ways that you can reduce it? Yes, our favorite reducing agent lithium aluminum hydride LAH in ether or we can also use hydrogen in the presence of copper chromite. Sodium borohydride is a weak reducing agent and is not able to bring about reduction of carboxylic acids to alcohols. An important point over here is Okay, let us first complete the reactions. I think RCOOH, right? So, when you reduce it, be careful of the structure. So, how are you going to write it? RC double bond OOH, right? Reduction means addition of hydrogen. So, electron pulled over here, the hydrogen becomes attached and hydrogen becomes attached. Is that complete? Is the bonding of uh, a carbon complete? No, it is not, right? Because, no, it is complete. Yes, we have got four atoms attached to it. Let us draw the four atoms that we have got around the carbon. R, C, O, H, O, H and H. But look at that, what we have got, we have got the two OH groups. Now, we know from our previous study that such type of groups cannot exist together two OH groups on the same carbon. No, 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 no. They are not able to tolerate each other and this gets converted into an aldehyde. But what do we have in the reaction? We have got lithium aluminum hydride which is a strong reducing agent. So, with the result, the C double bond O group is further reduced. So, we will have H and an H connecting over here. What do we get? R C H 2 O H. That means carboxylic acids are reduced to primary alcohols. Now, I have written this reaction in a very detailed manner for your study or for your examination point of view you can simply now go on to write the product as RCH2OH. It is better to understand the steps of the reaction to do it in steps so that it is easier for us to recall and yes of course the main purpose of studying to write it in the exams right. So, go ahead now and try writing the products of reduction. Make sure that you write the reducing agents above the arrow so that you remember it at the time of examinations as well. Yes, that's why I have also taken up pen and of course the screen to write so that we practice it together. What did you write the product as? Yes, of course, CH3, notice the number of carbon atoms remains the same. There is N carbon plus 1. There will be 1 plus 1, 2 carbon atoms. So, what will be the product form? CH3, 
CH2OH. It will be a primary alcohol. How do we know it's a primary alcohol? Look at the functional group. It's CH2OH. Now go ahead, form the product for the third compound that is listed on the screen. Yes, you are supposed to be keeping a pen and notebook with you so that we can learn, do the learning together, right? Okay, so it will be CH3, CH2OH, is that right? No, what is wrong in this? Look, how many carbon atoms? 1, 2 and 3. So, how many carbon atoms in my product? Here I have written only 2. So, how, what will be the product formed here? Yes, CH3, CH2, look at the third carbon and then OH. Did you write the reducing agents, lithium aluminum hydride plus ether or hydrogen in the presence of copper chromite? Please go ahead, write the reagents so that you are able to recall also at the time of exams because you would have written the same reaction three times and the trick is writing, learning by writing. An important point to remember over here is that diborene B2H6 can also be used as one of the reducing agents. And a bigger advantage of using diborane comes in when you have unsaturation or you have other groups like ester, nitro, halo, etc. in the carboxylic acid group. More of those details in your higher levels. For now, I think let us go on to the next set of reduction and that takes place with red phosphorus and HI. Look at the product of reduction. You've got RC double bond OH in the presence of red phosphorus in HI. The number of carbon atoms remaining the same, it is getting converted into what compound is this? Okay, try Yes, it will be an alkane. That means they get reduced to alkanes when treated with red phosphorus and HI. I hope you are taking down the notes because that's when learning takes place completely. Okay, now your chance to write the products of this reaction. Try it you will be very happy with your learning. Okay, so I will have CH3, that is my R over here. COOH group, C double bond, OOH is getting completely reduced. That means this is going away, this is going away, this is going away. Now, if you have to remove one oxygen, how many hydrogen will take its place? There will be two hydrogen which will become attached to carbon. Why two hydrogen? Because the valency of oxygen is two whereas the valency of hydrogen is one. So, to replace one oxygen you need two hydrogen. What about OH? How many bonds is OH forming with carbon? It is forming only one bond. So, in order to replace the OH I just need to put one hydrogen. That means there is CH3 and then there is CH3. What is the name of this compound? Yes, of course, it is C2H6, that is ethane. Easy? Okay, now again going back to the third compound that we had taken in our previous example. By the way, can you name this compound? So, I have CH3, CH2, COOH when treated with red phosphorus and HI. What do you get? What will be the name of this product? Write down the products. Keep it ready because I will give you the answer later on in the video. Next property of carboxylic acids is decarboxylation. D, what does D mean? Uh, remove. And what is the carboxyl group? Carboxyl is the COOH group. 
So, when we talk about decarboxylation, so removing the COOH group completely is decarboxylation. Now, it is slightly difficult to remove the COOH group directly. So, what do we do is we use a trick. We convert the carboxylic acid to its salt. So, for example, I replace the acidic hydrogen by sodium over here and I get RCOONA. Now, where does that come from? Don't worry. When we talk about acidic properties of carboxylic acids, we will understand that as well. So, sodium salt of carboxylic acid or we can also take potassium salt of carboxylic acid. So, in that case, the formula of the compound would be RCOOK. Yes, the K has to be connected. This is negative part, positive part. I will convert it into a salt and then bring about uh, removal because now it can easily combine with bases. So, you, if you look at the flow chart that I have shared with you, so we have already discussed the first bit that is reduction, reduction. Now, we are on to the next part of this flow chart that means decarboxylation of salts. I hope you've drawn this chart and kept it on your side stable so that we can refer to it as and when need be, right? Carboxylic acids. Now, this is the first reaction that we uh, did. So, carboxylic acid, rather than saying carboxylic acid, what do I do is I will now convert it and write it as salt of carboxylic acid that can be sodium salt, potassium salt because they will react only with strong bases. Now, if you recall your study in class 11 in grade 11, right? We did this reaction with the soda lime. Yes, it was used for the preparation of alkanes. So, sodium salt of carboxylic acid when treated with soda, soda, soda is sodium hydroxide, lime, lime is quick lime, CaO and you heat it. Now, look at what is going to happen. I am going to draw a neat box out here and we get what compound? Join it, Na2CO3, as simple as that, right? Okay, so I am I'm getting over here Na2CO3, sodium carbonate. Now, what is left? R and an H, that means the hydrogen which had gone away from the carbon has come back to it. Now, this R can be anything. R stands for alkyl group. What is that alkyl group? CH3, C2H5, C3H7. What is an alkyl group originally? You have an alkene, you remove a hydrogen from it, you get an alkyl group. You have an alkane, you remove a hydrogen, you get an alkyl group. So, there is one free valency available. You have an alkane C3H8, you remove a hydrogen and you get the propyl functional group, sorry, propyl as the alkyl group, right? Now, go ahead. Apply the same logic and we are taking the example. Now, some of you must be wondering what is this R? All these alkyl groups, instead of specifying the alkyl group, we write general reactions by taking R. R is nothing but the simplified representation or the general representation of this alkyl group. Yes, go ahead, write the products formed over here. Again, neatly draw a box over here as simple as that. This is actually the first reaction that we teach the students when they come to grade 11, right? So, what product will be formed over here? CH4. And what is CH4? Yes, our first organic compound, methane. And what else will be formed? Na2CO3. By the way, please don't forget the heat sign because without heating, this reaction will not take place, right? Now, the 
point to be understood over here is look at the carboxylic acid that you took initially. This salt of carboxylic acid has how many carbon atoms in it? Yes, it has two. Now look at the product that you have formed. How many carbon atoms does it have? Yes, it has got only one. And where is this carbon coming from? It is coming from the alkyl part of the carboxylic acid. Correct? So you are going to form an alkane by just adding a hydrogen to the alkyl part and that gives me the alkane that will be produced. Writing it down. So that is what I have written over here. Salt of carboxylic acid when heated with soda lime gives you an alkane with one carbon atom less. And which carbon has car carbon atom has disappeared? It's the carboxyl carbon which has been done away with. That is why the name decarboxylation. Easy now? Just break it down and everything falls into place. The next reaction that we've got is Kolbe's electrolysis reaction. Now this is the just this is the sh in short I've given you. Uh, let's come to this conclusion whatever what alkane is formed by looking at the reaction. What is Kolbe's electrolysis? We take an aqueous solution. Why do we take an aqueous solution? Because we know that in uh, solid form they are not going to be conductors, right? So RCOONA in an aqueous form when electrolyzed again what is going to happen is this part will be done away with decarboxylation and imagine and visualize that there are more than one molecules of RCOONA in the solution. When I am electrolyzing, I can't electrolyze just one molecule, right? Or one set of, uh, uh, yes, one ion or one molecule. So what do we do is, we take an entire solution which has so many ions in it. Now when I am going to electrolyze, the COONA part will do will be done away with. Now when this goes away, I am left with two lonely alkyl groups which combine together to form to join the two alkyl groups. So now as I told you the examples of alkyl CH3 CH3. What is the CH3 CH3? Would I call it as dimethyl or would I call it as bimethyl? No, 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 no. I am not going to call it any of that. Look at the structure carefully. Yes, yes. Lot of students get confused. I am, if you are not confused, then very good. That means you are alert during the class. Yes, we were talking about CH3 dot CH3. What compound is this? Yes, this is nothing but C2H6 and that is ethane. You know, some, many a times I have noticed that even the very high performers in the class, they tend to get confused because they are so stressed out and they are so nervous. They will start thinking what compound is this, one, two, two carbon atoms, so eth ethyl, like that they will work it out, okay. Okay, now to understand the basics of this reaction, CH3COONA aqueous breaks down to give you CH3COO negative in an aqueous solution plus Na positive in an aqueous solution, right? Now, there is one more reaction that takes place over here and that is CH3CO, sorry, water will ionize. Now, if you notice over here, all this while I was talking about RCOONA, so do I change it? Yes. Okay, let's make it simple then. So RCOONA and instead of methyl group, I will have RCOO negative over here. At the same time, water liquid will also ionize in the solution. Right, so I have hydrogen and the hydroxyl ions, right. Now, 
I've got the cation and the anion. I have got RCOO negative and OH negative. Both are the anions which will move towards the anode. RCO negative is pretty heavy, right? Look at it, the load that it is carrying. It wants to offload. Now, when it wants to offload, what it does is it gets rid of this COO negative and that's very common gas carbon dioxide. It wants to get rid of the single charge and that charge is nothing but the electron, so it does away with that charge leaving alone the poor R group with no charge and no CO2 as well. And this becomes what we call as a free radical. As I mentioned earlier, in a solution, it's not just one molecule. What is there is there are so many thousands of molecules in the reaction mixture. So there is R free radical generated from some other molecule. And the two of them say to each other, oh, look at that. You are lonely. I am lonely. We both want electrons. So let's, why not share? And they come together to form a stable molecule. Look at what we started off with. We started off with RCOONA. We got rid of the COONA over here. And the alkyl group got doubled to give me an alkane which is having number of carbon atoms double than the alkyl group in the carboxylic acid. Now, your part of, okay, there are the cations as well. We are not dealing with cations as of now. Let's focus and let's keep our focus on the carboxylic acid. Your part of the job is now try writing the same reaction taking ch3 coo na as an example it's an aqueous solution electrolyze it form the free radical form the product pause the video try it then only you'll be able to confidently say that you know Kolbe's electrolytic method i'm waiting Yes, so it will form CH3 dot CH3, right? So that means the alkyl group is getting doubled. What if this was C2H5? Then what would you get? Yes, obviously, you would get C2H5 dot C2H5. What compound is that? Bithyl, dithyl? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, correct. It would be butane. So if you notice, the number of carbon atoms is getting doubled. The number of carbon atoms in the alkyl group is getting doubled during, during Kolbe's electrolysis method. So that means by this method, if I start with an alkyl having one carbon, I will end up with two. If I, have, if I start with an alkyl group having three carbon atoms, I will end up with six. Does that Yes, absolutely. These are even numbers. In other words, the product will always have an even number of carbon atoms. So I can prepare only alkanes having even number of carbon atoms by this particular method. That is electrolyzing the salts of carboxylic acid. So, let us complete this again. So, salt of carboxylic acid. Undergoes Kolbe's electrolysis to give us alkane with double the number of alkyl groups. Right? I will also be posting these notes on the Google site pen and paper chemistry. Yes, you can Google it. Paper chemistry. All the flow charts, all these notes will be there. But what will you do with notes print out? If you don't write, you will be looking for more videos, more resources, more ways to understand. So a question for you over here is using Kolbe's electrolysis, I want to prepare C4H10. 
So what compound should I start with? Find out the answer. I'll give you the answer before we end this video. Okay. The next we've got is, again, let's go back to our flow chart. Silver salt of the carboxylic acid plus bromine, carbon, tetrachloride, uh, reflux, borodine, Hunsdecker reaction. It's a very different reaction. Look, we are not getting an alkane. We are getting a haloalkane and specifically... Which haloalkane are we getting? A bromoalkane, right? So let's get started with writing the reaction. So silver salt of carboxylic acid plus bromine and carbon tetrachloride a reflux and we get a bromoalkane. Again, the same thing, decarboxylation. So we get rid of the COO. AG part by treating it with bromine. You have already seen the reaction in the flow chart, right? Go ahead, then write the products. It's simple, right? Because there is no compound as AgCO2Br, right? There is no compound like this. So, how will I draw the box? Mm, okay, let me break down this BR, BR and write it as BR and BR, right? And we will have over here AG, BR, CO2 and then we are left with R and BR, right? So, let's complete the reaction. R, BR plus AG, BR and CO2. What is this RBR? This is a bromoalkane, right? According to the IUPAC system of nomenclature. What's your part of the job? To complete these two reactions. The first one is silver salt of which acid is this? CH3COOAG. So, how will I name this compound? It's silver salt of now imagine there was a hydrogen. What acid is this? Ethanoic acid. What is uh, the common name of ethanoic acid? Yes, acetic acid. So silver salt of ethanoic acid, right? And form the product. Go ahead, write the reaction. Oh, that's a silver salt, right? I should not be writing H. Again, Okay, next question. How can I get bromoethane by this method? So, if you start observing the reactions in a reverse order, your questions on conversions will be easily taken care of. Yes, that's the beauty. We are doing name reactions. We are doing direct reactions. We have taken up the conversions. What do we mean by no name reactions? Yes, this is a name reaction. So, for example, this reaction is known as borodine Hansdecker reaction. Right? So, this is named after a scientist, right? So, that is why Hansdecker, borodine Hansdecker reaction, Canizaro's reaction, aldol condensation, these are all called name reactions. And, uh, you know, you have very limited number of name reactions. So, if you can handle those, another two mark question taken care of. Did you write the products? Go ahead. Time to give the answers now. Yes, this will be CH3Br plus AgBr. You see again the carboxyl group has been done away with. The number of carbon atoms has gone down, right? So, we get bromoalkane. In order to prepare bromoethane, what will I do? I'll take C2H5COOAG. That will be silver salt of, yes, propanoic acid. What am I missing in these reactions that I have written? 
yes a very very important point that is the solvent and the fact that this is carried under reflux right good practice for me i have also written the same reaction three times okay answering your previous one so if i want to prepare c4h10 because i know in kolbe's electrolysis the number of carbon atoms is getting doubled so that means i will take half the number of carbon atoms in this and an aqueous solution kolbe's electrolysis gives me c4h10 easy lastly the product of this reaction that is reduction with red phosphorus in hi i had to give you the answer ch3 ch2 ch3 remember see be careful it's not ch3 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 that would be wrong why would it be wrong carbon 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 1 2 3 1 2 there's no place for a third hydrogen 1 2 3 that is why it's 2 over here okay now that we've done a good part of this flow chart can i ask you to try writing the reactions for the other parts you can draw the flow chart look at this got the flow chart for carboxylic acid properties of carboxylic acids yes they are very very you are very very familiar with them try it it's okay if you go wrong it's fine there's no harm but it is good to try look at the properties of the oh group related to your understanding of alcohols and don't worry if you don't get any of them i am there we will take care of these reactions and of these properties of carboxylic acids and do more of them in the next video till then please stay connected and please stay happy and working hard see you in the next video